hi beautiful people welcome to my channel this video is a video about size of diamond painting now does size matter well sometimes it doesn't but in diamond painting i must say it really does so um this video if you're a pro diamond painter and you've been diamond painting a long time you might find it more easy to choose the size of your diamond painting so this video is especially for people who are new to diamond painting or who buy a lot from um, stores where you can choose your diamond painting size and have some trouble with choosing what size to take I know like uh, Diamond Art Club, they have the size and um, most of the time, almost all the times, it's the right size for the painting and the rendering is perfect. At DIY Moon Shop, you can choose the size and you can sh uh, you get a picture of the rendering. So uh, they're normally uh, choosing a size isn't too hard either but I'm talking especially about shops like on Aliexpress or other shops where you can buy cheaper diamond paintings and sometimes you only get the small sizes and to help you choose your diamond paintings so that you can be happy with the rendering of them that's why I'm doing this video so size does matter <laughs> So, um, I'm showing you this by showing you some diamond paintings I've got in my stash. Of the smallest ones, I don't know where I bought them, I completely forgot. I have to check my email, maybe I can retrace my steps. This one, the big one, I bought on AliExpress. And I'm gonna show you um, with some diamond paintings of Mucha. That's Alphonse Mucha the Czechoslovakian artist who lived in, um, he was born in 18, oh, I can't remember, but he made lots of work in the Art Nouveau style, like the style that became really um, famous in the 1900s, so. And first I'm gonna show you the small ones. So, those Sorry about the glare, my over light, my head, my, my overhead light is on because it's very gloomy outside, so, so, oh, wait, I will put out the light because otherwise you won't be able to see what I'm saying, I'm dropping everything out, okay, so, there we go, I'm sorry. I have to crawl under my lazy arm. <laughs> yeah, the setup is not really perfect, I know. <laughs> so, this is one, a very beautiful painting, no doubt. And this is the second one. So, you might think when you see this, this is the second one. Wait, I will scoop this over just a little bit. This is the second one. Through the camera, I must say, it looks good. But these two paintings that I'm showing you, the smaller ones, are 30 by 40. So I'm gonna put the plastic back on. Will make me easier to show you. What has happened here is that they printed the picture with the details like it's supposed to be on the canvas. But let's take a look. You see how now it looks like a nose, yeah? But when you're going to diamond paint, you see here you have another color and here you have a flesh color I suppose so it won't be as detailed and I'm afraid when you do this like this looks good now um, 
um, when you do this and the diamond painting is finished, you will lose lots of detail. Like now it looks really good, but there are no diamonds on the canvas. So let me check if I can show you what I mean. Like the hair here. See, I'm afraid that when you put down those diamonds, it's gonna be a big blob of nothing. Like these things are not even really visible what they are. They are supposed to be roses, but and the eye. So I don't believe that when once you do this painting that it will have the outcome that's desired of a diamond painting. And why? Because it's really small, it's rendered really small. And actually this is 30 by 40, but but there's a but the canvas size is 35 by 25 so these I bought without looking at the size of the painting and I should have done because otherwise I would never bought these look I will show you see the hand but here the drills are too close together, I think. So this will lose lots of its details when you put your drills down. Because it's around, it might be possible that some of the picture is coming through, the background is coming through, you know, uh, in between the gaps of the drills. But I believe much will be lost in translation. Hmm. So, those are the smaller ones. Now we're going to take a look at a big one. It's also by Mucha. And this one I bought on AliExpress, oh, I, I believe last year. And it's um, 40, 45 by 110 centimeters. And this, I believe, is a square, because that was at that time, I was like, I want to do almost all the time squares, but I came back from that thought. <laughs> so, I'm not gonna take it all the way off. And even still with this one, there will be some pixelation going on in the face. But I believe you can see my point with this one. Details are very good. You will be able to see the hands once it's finished here. I'm not too sure what's going to happen there. So even this one might get me a little bit in trouble. But I can work around that. If the face is too pixelated, I can try to do something else. Because this is really dark, the picture is, is really, um, the saturation of the colors is really big, uh, really, yeah, big, big saturation of the colors. So these are really dark and I believe that the drills are lighter than, than this. So if I work on this, I believe I will be very happy with the rendering. And why? Because it's a, a bigger one. And you can see more details in the, the dress of the woman and the scarf she's wearing and her face and the flowers in the hair. So this one is a big one and it didn't cost that much. I should check if I still can find where I bought it. But this is just to give you an example of bigger versus smaller see so things you should um, consider when choosing a diamond painting and don't worry I will put it in text while editing so um, 
the smaller diamond paintings, and we're talking about diamond paintings like uh, 20 by 20, 30 by 40, 40 by 40, there, uh, those are good sizes for central figures uh, for a smaller amount of colors, like when you have a painting that has only six colors or seven colors, go ahead, buy the smallest one you can get, no problems there. Big blocks of color or uh, where there are strong outlines, like um, some of those Dis Disney type figures are good. Um, so cartoony things. Uh, but especially important is the amount of detail. So when there's lots of detail in the painting, you will have to go bigger. The smaller ones are good for uh, also for landscapes sometimes, or a portrait, like a portrait of a face where there's not too much going on, that for a small size that can do but then when you go bigger like let's say um from 50 on to um 80 by 60 for example there that's a good size for um landscapes also when there's not like the chuck pinson landscapes are really detailed so still you have to see if there's not too much detail but um, 80 by 60 is good for, uh, let's say, a family portrait, like uh, up to six persons or something. And then when you have a picture that is really, really detailed, like uh, most of the art of Mucha is very detailed because of the Art Nouveau lines and everything. So there it's always wise to go 80 and uh, more because there's so much detail. So um, that's something you should consider. So um, I will show you this one one last time. I did uh, do an unboxing for this one, but I wasn't too happy about that. So I never uh, put it online. This one has got many creases in the... So I don't know if I will be working on it. But I really love it. It reminds me of, of my childhood because it used to hang in the bedroom of my parents. So, yeah, I might do this one. Uh, it's a square and I really love it, but it's really a big one. <laughs> I was even thinking about uh, cutting the... Because here, down... That's all the dress, that's the dress you see. And I know it's uh, might take away some of the picture, but I think this would be, would have been a good size even when it was cut off a little bit like that, because you still have got the, the rings of, um, so yeah. Maybe I should do this one. I really like this and this is gonna be much, much color blocking. So, um, about the size of paintings. Another thing I want to mention is don't panic and don't get intimidated by the size of a painting because most of the time uh, when you look at charts, you see um, they always put a skill level next to the um, to the size of the painting. So they say like smaller ones are for beginners. And yeah, that's true. When you begin, just to see if you like it, a little one is very good. But um, then you have sizes like big size paintings and there they put, yeah, it's for experts and... and I believe it has nothing to do with your skill level. I believe it's mostly personal taste to begin with. But also um, the amount of time that you can spend on your diamond painting. Um, if you have the patience to just 
go with the process and not be hasty to see results. I think that's all things that should be considered. And even when I work on a small, on a big painting, afterwards I always like to do something small just to, to get it all out. <laughs> no, because it can be tedious to work on a big painting. I'm not gonna lie, but yeah, most of the time I really like the process and the fact that it it all comes together while working on it. And yeah, I understand that people can get frustrated and really um, halt in the middle of their diamond painting like because they're they had enough but that's why some people like to start multiple canvases I normally I don't I I'm lying right now because I've got two whips like I've got my Josephine wall but um, when it's later in the evening or I want to sit somewhere else, I'm uh, doing uh, diamond tots, uh, but it's only that big. So that's just something I do at the side. But normally I'm not a serial starter. So guys, that's it for this video. I hope um, I could give you some help in choosing a size. Also, I want to shout out to all of you guys. So, if uh, you are a subscriber of mine, or even if you're not a subscriber, but you come across this video, and you have a channel of your own, please let me know in the comments, because I'm really curious um, of, of your works, and, and, and sometimes I get responses like I'm working on this and on this and I really like to see what you are working on so um, if you're a creator yourself please put your uh, put down a comment so I can go check your channel and um, that's also a way uh, we can help each other because then when you put your uh, comment down other people can see your comments and go check your channel so um, this is something I just wanted to get out of the way. So um, in this video, please, if you comment, let me know what you're working on or write down what your latest uh, video was about. So I'm talking about crafts in general, like diamond painting. You can say I've got a crochet channel of or, or uh, anything else craft re related. So please do so. I'm very curious. If you don't have a channel, no biggie. Uh, if you're working on something and you want to share, uh, you can share it on my uh, Facebook page, um, my business page. No problem. I don't mind the self-promotion, but just keep it, <laughs> keep it in limited. But I think we should help one another. And that's why you can post anything on the, the Facebook page. Uh, just so long that it's craft related, that you don't bully anyone, because I hate bullies. <laughs> I've been bullied so much when I was a child. And um, no politics, please. I'm, mm, I might say I'm, I'm a little into politics, I know, but... You know, just have respect for one another and and if you post something on the Facebook page, I will put a link down in the description box. You can put it down just so long that it's um, friendly and kind and it's craft related. So, there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a really, really wonderful day and a really good week ahead and I hope to see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!